This video is sponsored by Squarespace. You can make your own beautiful website or online store with this all-in-one platform. Side note, I just updated my shop with a bunch of new prints and stickers and some sticker sheets that you wouldn't have been able to get yet. So if you're interested, go check that out. Hi everyone, this video I'm doing a spread in my sketchbook, filling two pages on either side, and I'm mainly going to be using gouache. I used to use gouache a lot when I discovered it a few years ago. I always say a few years ago for stuff because I don't know when it was, but I used to use gouache to do like complete paintings just with gouache. Lately, I've mostly been doing like watercolor stuff and pencil and like wax pastels and like more like dry media plus watercolor. Um, I haven't like just used gouache itself to do an entire painting and like use it in an opaque way instead of like as a watercolor because um, the first thing you saw me draw, I was just like filling in a dog sketch that I did a couple days ago with like really diluted gouache and now I'm actually going in with like thicker gouache. I still like to mix it with some water because if I don't do that, I find it's a little too thick. And I saw this photo on Pinterest of a deer with a, well, I thought it was a crow, but it's a jackdaw, which is a bird that I didn't really know existed. I probably have seen many photos of these birds, but I always assumed they were crows, but they're something else. They kind of look like crows, but they're not crows. But um, I found the original photo put on the screen. It's by photographer Val Saxby. And I really love this photo and I saw it on Pinterest, but it was like cropped and filtered and I decided to go on the hunt to find out who actually took the photo because it led me to an Instagram page, but they didn't take the photo. I like reverse image searched and I found an article from 2015 and then it credited a photographer called Val Saxby. So I went to their site and I found the full photo. It's a really gorgeous photo of just like a, a bird on a deer and it kind of looks like they're like having like a little like moment in nature and I, I just couldn't stop thinking about that photo that I saw so I really wanted to just like use it as a way to get back into gouache to try to get used to using the medium again because I just like really felt like doing an actual painting where the paint is opaque and you can paint on top of things and add layers instead of with like watercolor you can't really add lights on top of darks you have to sort of work from light to dark not like dark to light if that makes sense because watercolor is a transparent medium, so you can't put white watercolor on top of things. Well, you can, but that's not the way I use watercolor. With gouache, you have like white and it's actually like paint and it's thick, so you can put it on top of dark colors. It will lighten areas. And I just really wanted to work with a medium that let me do that and kind of go back to um, my gouache style. And I felt really like nervous doing this because it was, it was really like messy and rough and it took a while to come together and I was really just kind of treating this as a study, practicing, warming up, trying to get used to the medium again. And the little like dog sketch above it was like a a pre-warm up warm up because I was just like, okay, let's just like color this in just to like see how the paint feels. My favorite type of gouache to use is the Holbein. Is it Holbein or Holbein or, or I don't know how to say it. I can never remember. But I like their artist gouache. I like the kind that is water soluble. Well, I mean, I think acrylic gouache is water soluble. I just mean the kind that could rework with water, not acrylic gouache. I like regular gouache the best. I definitely see why someone would prefer acrylic gouache because you can paint on top of it and not mess with the layers below. But I like how I can pick up paint off the palette that has already dried. It makes me be able to work with it a little bit more loose and a little bit more carefree and not not worry about wasting paint because I know I can always use it later. Um, and of course, when it dries, the consistency is different than when it's fresh out of the tube, but you can still use it. And um, I just really like that about regular gouache. While I am painting this, I want to answer some of your questions, some topics that I asked for on Instagram, just for some things to talk about in this video. And um, the first one was, how are you liking the new sketchbook? And what's your favorite size for a sketchbook? I like this sketchbook so far because it can actually handle watercolor surprisingly well. You, you'll you see that with the second drawing here. This second drawing, I really wanted to draw a crow. I've just been thinking about them a lot. And I think the photo that I use is actually a jackdaw, not a crow. But, you know, for our purposes here, it's it's a crow um, because it's a blackbird that is a... Uh, has big wings and, and stuff like that. But I really wanted to draw a crow with a bunch of spring flowers. I just wanted to mix like like the darkness of the crow with the pastel 
of the flower. So I wanted to do another little painted sketch in my sketchbook and I did a base painting with watercolor for this and then I did gouache on top. And I think I like doing that the best because the watercolor has this really nice translucent quality that sort of makes it look like light can like shine through it. But then the gouache is good for adding highlights, adding details, cleaning up areas, um, giving areas more of an opaque look. But I found the watercolor on this sketchbook. It's the Royal Talons Art Creation Sketchbook. I started it recently. I have it in the lilac color, which I love. And it has very smooth paper and it's not as thick as I'm used to. It can't take as much of a beating as like my watercolor cotton paper sketchbooks that I like to use a lot. Um, but it's been a nice change of pace to have like a smooth paper and um, it can actually take watercolor surprisingly well. Like I, I didn't expect that, but it really can. The paper does buckle more than I would like, but it's nothing I can't handle. And it's honestly like not that big of a deal. It's kind of charming when a sketchbook is all like crinkly because it just kind of proves that you've used it a lot. You've done a lot of paintings in it. Um, it kind of, it's like the wear and tear of like a well-loved sketchbook. But so far it's been going well. I would definitely recommend this sketchbook for anyone who wants a fun color and a nice portable size. Another part of this question was, what's your favorite size for a sketchbook? Okay, I like this one because of how small it is and it's very portable, but sometimes I miss having like so much space. I think my ideal size would be the same height of this sketchbook, but stretch it out horizontally so it's more of like a square and it's longer. And that way you just have a little bit more like horizontal space to make art. And then you can kind of choose if you want to do landscape or portrait stuff, you have room for thumbnails. I think that would be my ideal size and I might go back to squares eventually, but my sketchbook after this one is the same size. So I'm going to be at this size for a while, but um, I've been, I've been really enjoying the smaller sketchbook. It's just more portable. It makes me feel like I'm getting through it faster, even though I haven't used it that much. Now to thank this video sponsor, which is Squarespace. Squarespace is the perfect platform for building your very own website. I'd recommend looking through all of their different templates and choose one as your starting point instead of going from scratch, which can be a bit overwhelming. That's what I did for my website. And then you can change the font and the colors, add pages, move stuff around. There's so much you can do with Squarespace and I really want to take more advantage of all their features, but my website is pretty simple, pretty bare bones at the moment. They also have a fluid engine editor, which makes it really easy to add different elements on the page and drag them around. And they all snap to a grid, so you can move stuff around, but it's still organized. And of course, I like to link all my social media to my website and Squarespace has a function for this. You just put your link in and the icon appears automatically. So I can do YouTube, Instagram, you can do Twitter. TikTok, Pinterest, stuff like that. If you like to give Squarespace a try, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash gelarts to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. I really am liking this sketchbook. I think a big part of it is the fact that it's such a cute color and that's kind of not stupid. I was gonna say that's kind of stupid to say, but it's not. I mean, having something that is like aesthetically pleasing to you can be inspiration enough to actually like open it and want to fill it with like cool art and use it more because you feel more of like a sense of attachment to things that you actually like the look of. So there is something to be said about having a cute looking sketchbook. I kind of went into this painting with like zero planning. I just wanted to do a really nice drawing of a crow and I think it went really well and then I just started adding colors like blocking them in just drawing random flowers. Um, I'm thinking I might scan this in and work over it digitally because I really like doing that with uh, traditional paintings like this because I get the like spont spontaneous brushstrokes and like the natural textures of the traditional painting, but then I get to refine it and like bring it to its like best version of itself digitally where I have access to like so many tools and, and textures and just get to fine tune everything. Um, I really like doing that, like mixing traditional and digital. I think you get the best of both worlds. And sometimes I'm like, oh, this is cheating. I'm scanning it in and painting over it. But like, it's it's not. It's just like another medium of art. And it's how I find myself having like the best results. So I will be doing that with this and it'll probably be the March print. That's what I'm thinking, but I'm not sure. But um, I have a good feeling about this one. How do you deal with burnout? This is a... Good question because burnout is one of those things that I think everyone has experienced and it can happen with like any aspect in your life. It can happen with like, you can burn out from your hobbies, you can burn out from doing chores, you can just, it's basically when you're just have nothing left to give to like a certain activity 
or creatively or like physically. When I get burnt out from art, I just try to not do any art. If I am truly like depleted, I think it's good to take a break, like step back from it and like go out and like see the world outside you. And this can mean like literally go to your backyard, look at a tree, go for a walk, go to nature. I like to do that to sort of like replenish my my creative bucket, I guess you could call it. Because if you're like truly burnt out, drawing just feels so, it takes so much effort. It's just like not a great experience. As I go on with my art journey, I'm realizing the importance of breaks from art for me personally. Um, sometimes it works to like sketch all the time, every day, always draw a little bit each day. But Sometimes it's also good to take a step back from it for a few days because then when you return, you just have like more of a passion for it, more of an inspiration. You feel like, okay, I haven't drawn in so long. I'm so excited to finally draw. And then you're just a little more focused. You like, you just have all these ideas that you've been wanting to get down on paper. So if you're truly burnt out from art, I would take a break for however long you need. It doesn't have to be like a week or like a set amount of time. It can be an afternoon, it can be a couple hours, like whatever you need to do to like recharge and then come back to it. That's what I do. Of course, sometimes when you're burnt out and trying to draw, you might try to force yourself through it and sometimes that works too. Like sometimes you need to power through, but sometimes you can't. I think it's just really dependent on the type of burnout and and how you personally deal with things like that. I hope that kind of helps. I feel like my answer always changes when it comes to burnout and art block. And like, I used to say like, just like power through or ju just take a short break. But sometimes I need a few days off of drawing. I think something also that really helps me because I have an art business if I don't feel like drawing. And I recently watched one of Apple Cheek's videos where she said this and I really resonated with it too. When I don't feel like drawing, I can just do a bunch of admin work and get caught up on that stuff. And then when I am like itching to get away from that and to like actually create stuff, then I'm even more excited to do it. And that way I still feel like I'm being productive, but it's not like creatively. It's more like technically like counting inventory, answering emails, updating my website, updating my shop, all that stuff, like editing. Editing is my least favorite thing to do though. So that doesn't help me deal with burnout, but doing the fun little admin tasks day to day really helps me. So maybe if there's something else that you need to do that makes you feel productive, but it's not art, it can sort of like give you that like jump start to like doing things and like feeling accomplished, that might help as well. But sometimes you really just need to rest. It just depends. You gotta try something until something sticks, but that's what works for me sometimes. Do you go through phases with working with certain mediums? Definitely, like I feel like with this video, I'm entering another phase and I don't know how long it's going to last of like, oh, I want to use gouache and do gouache paintings because I haven't done that in so long. But sometimes I have like pencil crayon phases where I like to use a lot of dry mediums, media, and just like do scratchy pencil lines and do pencil sketches or like ballpoint pen sketches. I think like cycling through different media throughout the year can add a lot of interest to your life and to your art instead of just sticking to the same thing all the time. So I love to change things up because you're always discovering new ways to work. Even if it's not just to like, I wanna make more interesting art, so I'm gonna switch media. Sometimes it's just like, I feel like using this because I like the way it looks when I put this on the page. So I'm just gonna do that and see what happens. It's honestly just like for my own enjoyment and whatever I feel like doing at the time, or it'll be for like ease. So when I really want to like make a nice, good finished illustration, I'll get out my watercolors and my pencil crayon because I know those are reliable for me and they go well. But if I'm wanting to experiment and mess around, I love to just like use whatever whatever medium has been catching my attention at the time. So I definitely go through phases. I rarely stick to like the same thing for too long, but I always come back to things. I never like abandon stuff completely. I'll always come back unless I really didn't like it. Like, like acrylic paint, I don't know if I'll come back to that. There's just other stuff I'd rather invest my time into, but sometimes I find myself wanting to, so you never know what could happen. How long have you been drawing? This is a good question. I usually say, I'd say I've been drawing seriously since I started my YouTube channel. And when I started, I was very much a beginner, but I had already been drawing for a few years before that. But um, I started my YouTube channel in 2013 and I think I uploaded my first video on the 15th of February. So it's been over 11 years of drawing. So that's what I would say. But I think I got really serious into drawing um, 
the year after I graduated high school, so that would have been 2016 until now. But that's sort of like my timeline. I think the last question I'm going to do is um, inspirations from your travels and how they inform your art. My friend asked this question and um, probably because we recently went to India as a friend group for my friend's wedding and it was such an interesting experience. It was really cool to go to like a foreign country like that. Um, The farthest I've traveled has been Well, the farthest has been the east coast of Canada, but I live in Canada, so that's still like my own country. Um, And I've been to the States a couple times, but I haven't like been on an overseas flight like that before. So that was really cool. And I brought my sketchbook and like all my art supplies and I was thinking like, okay, maybe I'm going to sketch a lot while I'm here and like find some time to like draw the things around me. But I basically never did that. I only did it once when I felt a little bored. I just wanted to like sketch a little bit. I just preferred to to not draw not think about art not think about about anything not work at all because it's really hard for me to do that it's really hard for me to just stop working stop drawing stop like doing admin tasks don't look at your emails well I think I still looked at emails on the trip but seeing all the nature there was super inspiring for me seeing like peacocks in the wild and monkeys and all these birds I've never seen before there was deer in this park that we walked to. There was plants I've never seen before, like like in the wild. So much, like the flora and fauna is completely different from what I'm used to. And that was so inspiring for me just to like look at it all and think about like drawing it and think about what I might like draw from as inspiration. And I feel like that trip sort of like refilled my my like nature inspiration bucket, if that makes sense. So I think traveling It's just a way for me to like recharge and not think about art and not expend any like creative energy and instead it sort of like restores it. If that makes sense, it's not like if I go somewhere, I see a building, I'm going to draw that building. It's sort of more nuanced than that. Thank you so much for your questions. I was just really looking for a couple things to talk about and answer in this video. Aside from just talking about the art, which I had a lot of fun making, For a few days, I had been feeling like, oh, I really want to draw, but I'm not sure what to draw. And like, I just can't bring myself to sit down and draw because I feel so busy. I've been doing inventory and taxes and like all that annoying bookkeeping stuff, which I like to do, but it's very time consuming. So I finally just got a whole day just to make art and film it. And it was very fulfilling. And I'm really glad I did that. And I want to draw more now. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you drew anything while watching it. If you like gouache, if you prefer regular gouache or acrylic gouache, that would be a cool thing to know. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.